Okay, we're back. Where we left off was basically to explain how our three-year variance that we have in our calendars is not only likely a product of the Veronic calendar having a three-year variance, but because when you just plain add up the dates in the Bible by themselves, you're going to get a three-year variance. The reason why you're going to get a three-year variance is that people don't understand what the Bible's numbers are, are about. They are about different time tracks accounting and crediting and debiting based on different criteria. You have different sets of books and time is being tracked for its efficacy along different lines. The blue line is for the civilization unit, but the green line has to do with the birth of Messiah. Now the blue line affects the birth of Messiah also because, and we know this because this is Noah to Jacob. And here, the birth of Messiah is in jeopardy because Israel rejects God as king. However, when you have multiple time tracks with different accounting purposes, they each have their own deadlines. And the earlier of the two deadlines is the deadline that ends up governing when an event has to occur. And we saw the example in the last increment how Abram, relative to the world, which is the Noahic line, okay? Abram, relative to the world, had to supermature by 2046 because Noah's 490 year time grant was running out that year. But on a different time track for the world, namely the 1050 time track, he's 54 years early. And so the world is still owed a credit based on this time track. The 490 time track was running out, so that's the earlier one, and therefore he had to super mature by 2046, or the world would have ended. But that still left this criterion of the 1050 to run, and based on that he was 54 years early. By the time David is king at Hebron, that 54 year credit is maintained because the 1050 ends in 3150. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming that you know enough about this worksheet so I don't have to show it every time. See, Abram's personal 1000 is running here. Okay. That was a contiguous deadline, but the civilization for the historical ends here. The voting period for the unbeliever begins and ends here. David ends up being crowned king of Hebron just inside the margin there, so that there can be a voting period for the unbeliever. Okay, but relative to the whole 1050 from Adam, He's still 54 years early because this is 50 years and that's an extra four. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> Therefore, we have two time tracks with respect to 490 or 1050. They each have different deadlines. The earlier of the two deadlines impacts whether the world can continue to breathe. Similarly, the Noahic Covenant is for civilization as a whole versus the Abrahamic covenant which is for a people namely Israel from whom Messiah will come and he has to come now through a king namely David crowned king at Hebron the reason why he has to now come through a king is because the king of Israel God was rejected 40 years prior see how they interrelate you have a new deadline that comes in because Israel rejected God as king and that's going to depend on whether or not there's somebody alive who was granted time in this case Abraham's time grant ran out 
in 3046. So there's no time grant from Abram running in 3046, and Israel rejects God as king in 3056. Well, how could that even happen? How could that be allowed? Well, because Moses, God made a covenant with Moses too. And that's in Numbers 14 when God says, how about if I start all over, wipe out these people and start all over making Israel with you? Now, Moses said no to that. But it's because of Moses that the Exodus could occur. Moses got a 490-year time grant that's dated from the Exodus. He also got a 1,000-year time grant, okay, that runs out in 3066, which I measure right here. Okay. In other words, Moses didn't agree to that use of the grant. He didn't say no that God couldn't give him the grant because that would benefit Israel. He wanted it to benefit Israel, even though Israel was rejecting him also at that time. Okay. So because this grant was existing for Moses, Back up here in 3046, when Abram's personal 1,000 time grant runs out, it's okay because Moses' time grant is still running for another 600 years. All right? So it's okay that this happened. It's okay, therefore, that God grant more time for there to be somebody else to pick up the time baton because Moses' time baton was still running. The one to pick up the baton is David. Okay, but once he picks up the baton, who's going to pick up from him? That's the issue. Okay, well, 1,050 from 3056, all right, is 4106. So who's ever going to pick up the baton is going to have to pick it up by that date at the latest at the latest but David doesn't become king of all Israel until 3143 3103 see that's right here so the time baton here ends in a thousand years from this date not a thousand years from this date a thousand years from this date is 4106 from Adam and that's what everybody's looking at when they add up the Bible numbers actually people are looking at either one time track or the other they don't realize that these time tracks interact and are conditional and that's why we can't reconcile Bible dates. You can reconcile them once you know God's rules for time. As you can see, there's a reconciliation right here. Christ can't, Christ can't wait this long to be born. He has to be born at the earlier, earlier of the two time tracks. And the earlier of the two time tracks is a thousand years from David's united kingship. So that means that if you wanted to, you could take this and make this 1 AD. Okay? And some people have. So basically what they, they're doing is they're adding, it depends on, because they don't necessarily know what month of the year he was born. He was born at the end of a year. So when this is 4 BC, you really, for math purposes, treat it as 3. You know, you're adding and subtracting 3. So you could add 3 to this and make that 1 BC. End of 1 BC. And a lot of people do. There's a raging debate that's been going on for 200 years about this, in fact. Whether it's 4 BC or 1 BC, all based on what, what kind of eclipse people want to claim happened when Herod died. Well, it's the 1 BC eclipse because that allowed more time for his funeral. No, it's the 4 BC eclipse because of this and that and the other thing, blah, 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 blah. Okay, they argue. But see here, 4 B.C. is equal to 1 B.C. 
because he's really born here. We come up with 4 BC because this is our baseline that we're, look, we're using. And we're using it based on the blue time track. Because we have messed up the green time track. We don't get David's dates right. Because we think he was born and died at age 70. So our green time track for David is all messed up. Even when we figure out that he was you know, king in 1000 BC over all Israel. That's a pretty common scholarship conclusion. Okay, but because we get wrong when he died, we get all muddled with our, with our timeline. And so there's all this argument. Okay, well, so it, we, we want to say it's 4 BC. And then these other guys want to say it's 1 BC. Well, honey, 4 BC and 1 BC are the same date. It's called 4 BC if this is your baseline. This will be your baseline if you're using the blue time track. You won't know that there's a difference in the time tracks because nobody knows these rules for time. Right now I'm the only person on the planet who knows these rules. That's why I'm making these videos. Okay? Here's how you resolve it. This is not the right time track to use to, corrupt, to plot A, B, A, D, and B, C. This is the time track you use, the green one. It switches because this is the earlier deadline based on the fact that David died when he was 77, okay, in year 3143. He was not 70, he was 77. And he dies in, his 3140, in year 3143 from Adam when he's 77. So Christ, the outer limit of time, because of the thousand-year time grant, okay, just like it was between Noah and Abraham, the outer limit of time is 4143 from Adam. That's what Daniel 9.26 is based on, this number plus 1,000. That's how come that time track works. It's taking a look at the blue time track versus the green time track. And the earlier of the two is the green time track. Remember I said these are subsets of the green time track? Because it's occurring earlier. David's death occurs earlier than this deadline. But the world, as we call it, BCAD, is operating on the blue time track. We don't know that this is an interfering deadline. Therefore, the Lord is born three years earlier. We don't know that these are deadlines. Okay, that's our problem. So when we have all this argument about 4 BC and 1 BC, 4 BC equals 1 BC, okay. And then the Exodus is actually for 1437 BC. You're cutting off three years off all the BC dates prior, okay? Which is what what brought us to our Bible time distance table, because BC and AD are measured based on Christ, right? So let me get rid of the there, so you can see more of it. All right. So since it's based on Christ, I have to bring this up here. Okay, here's Christ relative to Adam. 4136, he dies. 4103, he's born. Relative to David, he's born in the thousandth anniversary that David was king over Jerusalem. And he dies, 580, he's born 583 years after the temple. Okay, this would be your true BCAD right here. This whole line here based on the actual deadline for him to be born and he was born then as you know the Bible tells you that so Exodus your corrected date for the Exodus based on his birth since BC means before Christ before Christ the Exodus was 1437 years prior before Christ Abraham reached maturity 2057 years prior before Christ, the flood occurred 2447 years prior. Before Christ, Noah was born 347 years prior. 
before Christ, Adam was born, uh, Adam fell, fell. That's actually Adam's fall, not creation. Adam fell 4,103 years prior. So here's your corrected AD BC. So he dies AD 33, which a lot of people say, but they don't understand that this has to get fixed too. Okay. In other words, see, the, the problem we've all had is that if you say AD 33, we, we just like move these up three, but that doesn't work because the, 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 it won't still tally to the Bible because the Bible's operating on two time tracks, not one. That's why you, you can do this only if you know the two time tracks and the difference. That the green time track supersedes the blue one. Okay? If you understand that this was in this is still in the Bible as a time track. It's measuring something else. You can't use this for BC. That's the point I'm trying to make. You can't just cut off three years and do what I just did unless you know that, well, for B.C., if you're measuring from Christ, yes. If you're measuring from all the years in the Bible, no. Because Christ ends up being born three years prior to the latest schedule for him, which was three years later. He also ends up dying seven years prior to the deadline, which was 4143 for him. This is why people are all screwed up about his birth and death. They make lots of mistakes. They don't recognize that high the Bible's operating on two time tracks, and the earlier of the two always governs. The earlier of the two was that the Jews rejected him. Okay, so now he's dying when, when um, David had retired from kingship in the thousandth anniversary of David's retirement, not death, when the temple would have completed two 490s had it never been raised. At the 490 times three of the Exodus to the very day. You see, all these dates have to converge. That's the deal. Is can Christ be born and die on time? That's the trial issue. It's all about the timing in Israel in the Old Testament. With church, all those bets are off. With church, the, the, the issue is bodies. But with Israel and prior, the issue was time. There was a set time that things had to happen. And if that time wasn't met, then God would lose, Satan would win in the trial. Now it's set bodies. And Christ prayed for it to be set bodies, set by Father in John 17. So there is no set time for church. That's why you can't predict the rapture. And that's why the rapture kicks off the tribulation. Because the tribulation is a set time. The millennium is a set time. So we go from set time to his birth to him being rejected. So he dies seven years before the set time was up. So the set time plays on the temple for the first seven the last seven being the tribulation still reserved and it's vested in Christ so you can't be a preterist and be biblical but with respect to church there is no set time so you also can't be sitting there date setting the rapture and be biblical and Paul's meter it tells you why you can't all right all this meter is designed to say well what if the rapture in 66 through 73 if the rapture occurred in 66, Christ would have been dead as long as he had been alive. And the temple, therefore, would have gone down in 70 AD, which it did. And then the, the tribulation would have been over in 73, which it wasn't. Okay, well then what if, we, what if the temple goes down in 73 and the tribulation ends in 77? What if the tribulation starts in 77 and ends in 84? What if 84 to 94? See, and all these dates are what ifs. And then Paul tells you the character of that time and the likelihood of the rapture by his meter. Okay? But he never says it could have happened at any time. He never says it's going to happen at that time. He's just giving you some what-ifs and telling you the character of the time. Like it was real likely that it was going to happen here in 231 AD. And a whole lot of people in Rome, Jews and Christians alike, were expecting it to happen then, the tribulation to start then. So much so that the Catholic guy at Rome was fighting with 
the Christians and the Jews. And they invented the Peter list in part, putting Peter on the list and saying he's a, a bishop in Rome, that he was actually in Rome then. They put him on the list in part in order to get rid of the so-called Kiliasts. Okay, you can look up Kiliasts in Rome, 3rd century, and you'll find all kinds of books on it written in the 19th century and the 20th century. It's really sad. So somebody knew Paul's meter back then. So that's the point I'm trying to make here. Is just it's really simply this 4 a 4 BC equals 1 BC. Because the Lord was really born in what we call 4 BC. And we have our dates messed up because that's really Exodus year 1437. BC means before Christ. So all dates prior are dates measured in terms of Christ. Well, but if his birth year, if we're getting his birth year wrong in absolute terms, then we got to make some adjustments. And those adjustments are is you got to you got to cut off 3 years from all of your BC dates before this date. But when you're reading the Bible, you have to keep in mind that it's not only measuring from the Davidic track. It's measuring from the Noahic track. And the Noahic track would have allowed Christ to be born three years later. So long as you know what time track you're measuring, you're not going to get bollocked up and place the 1 AD three years after it, its real event. You see the point? So for all those poor scholars who are arguing whether or not there was an eclipse in 4 BC or 1 BC and which one allotted more time for Herod to be buried, hi everybody, 4 BC is 1 BC, you're just not looking at the right time track in the Bible. And the reason you're not is you don't know that David died when he was 77 and that because he died when he was 77, the deadline for the, the Lord's death was 4143 from Adam's fall, which is the deadline in Daniel 926, the end of the 62nd week. And it's solar years, not lunar. So therefore, that was the deadline of time. 40 years prior to that is 4103. Okay? But Christ didn't die then. He died seven years early in the 61st week. So therefore, extra seven years is left over as a hanging chad, which had to play against church. Not church, but against the temple. And so Paul is doing all these what-if scenarios. What if the rapture occurs when the temple goes down? What if the rapture occurs three years prior to the temple going down? What would that look like? What would the time look like? Because you can't predict the rapture. So what doctrine can you get out of the fact that you can't predict the rapture? When Israel and everybody else for 4,000 years has been living on a timeline. Now all of a sudden all bets are off. Can't you give us something about the time? Yeah, sure. If the rapture starts in 66 AD, the temple will go down in 70. That's Daniel 927, middle of the, the 70th week. So that would be handy. Temple really did go down in 70. But if not, then here's the character of the time for this time slot, illustrated by the text. Here's the character of time for this time slot, illustrated by the text, and so on, and so on, and so on, until we get to this period. Constantine. By the time Constantine comes, for us to become the praise of his glory, Constantine ends up dying in 337, pro el, not pro el picotas. I went through that, okay, right up here. Okay, see, Constantine dies here because church is apostate. He institutionalized church, and that's against the law. That's against God's law. The only head of the church is Christ. There is no vicar on earth. But our boy Constantine institutionalized the church, and even then there was no such thing as pope. There were just a lot of competing factions, and he wanted to have control over them. That's really what it was. But he should have had a hands-off policy altogether. But he didn't. And they were all completely in the tank. They were Revelation 17 harlot all the way. Boy, oh boy, they wanted to have political power so they could beat up their enemies. And the Donatists wanted to beat up the Armenians, and the Armenians wanted to beat up the whoever it was. I don't think they were called Armenians then. They were called something else. A bunch of idiots, all of them. 
and Constantine was basically giving them a voice. He shouldn't have done that. So he dies in the middle of Proa. So he's not first fruits. And first fruits are always a few. So there's no meter at all here. No submeter, just a 91. A blank winter of church with just a few handfuls being waved before God from time to time. The few kings being developed. So as you can see, this has been a really interesting explanation about what the heck has been going on in our life. How we got this three-year variance, okay? Because it's really based on the Bible. It's really truly based on Scripture. There is a three year earlier deadline that intervened, changing the timeline from blue to green. And I'll cover more about the other dates, but I just wanted to limit this video so that you understand 4 BC is 1 BC. Okay? Exodus was 1437 years prior to his birth. He had to be born three years earlier. But when people are looking at the blue timeline, they're dating 1 AD three years later, thinking he was born three years later, or even six years later, or whatever they come up with. Some of them coming up with three years too soon. Of course, that's the origin of 4 BC too, also. Like Bishop Usher truncating this to 4100. This is where it's coming from. They don't know God's rules for time. God's rules for time operate on different time tracks. And then the earliest of the time tracks that comes due, just as was true here when you had Noah versus Abram, the earliest of the time tracks is like a bill coming due soonest. It gets paid first. And what got paid first is the Lord had to be born a thousand years after the start of David's United Kingship, or time would have ended. So you see, you don't have to worry about which eclipse it is, because 4 BC equals 1 BC. Peace out.